The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host and or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of the host and or Paranormal Buzz Radio and or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is prohibited. Paranormal Buzz Radio will not be held responsible for you holding your knees, crying and rocking in a corner in a puddle of your own urine, or being beheaded by a group of children in a cornfield. In fact, if you come across a group of children in a cornfield, we promise to make fun of you as you run away screaming in terror. Listener discretion is advised. Here's your host, Kristen Kelly. Hey guys. Holy crap, we're live. You guys can't see this right now, but I'm taking my finger off. I'm not good at that vulture. Hi, everybody. <laughs> wow. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Travis Moon Podcast. As always, we're your hosts. I'm Chris. I'm Kelly. And tonight, we have a very special guest, uh, a guy who... Not only has tons of questions, but inspires uh, lots of questions. Like, if you're bald, where does your forehead technically end? Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we got the Dare Bear live tonight. Hey, Darren. Hey, guys. How's it going? Doing uh, doing all right, uh, more or less. It's It's been a long week. It has. Uh, it really it has. has. And it's only Wednesday. And it's only freaking Wednesday. I was saying that yesterday already. Mm-hmm. 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 Now it all started about Monday night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He broke himself. Yeah. I, I slipped a couple ribs. Um, That's what he's saying. Yeah. If uh, anybody doesn't know what slipping a rib is, so you got your two floaters down below. So you've got your main ribs that are Like attached, your normal rib cage. But then you have two floaters down below. On occasion, with enough force... You can actually disconnect those from the cartilage, and it's terrible. <laughs> I guess it'd be like yeah. Marilyn Manson then. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're just did like they're just uh, disconnected from the cartilage. They're not totally removed. No, I'm the one well, with a, a rib missing. So, <laughs> but no, he's been kind of hurt in unit for sure. He'll move and you hear a grunt come uh, out of him. So, and... so yeah, I'm gonna get real close. Real close to the mic. Do you guys hear something that sounds like this? Uh, oh, of course, the podcast. Uh, that's me adjusting in my chair. Um, he makes a lot of old man noises anymore. Oh, tons of old man sounds all day long here. But other than that, uh, other than that, life's good. It's busy. Been re- no, it's gonna be busy. Eh, Very yeah. busy. It's been busy. It's just gonna get worse. That's all. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Better, worse, you know, take your pick on that. But. Yeah. Wait, what, uh, what's what's next on the agenda for Darren? Uh, well, we got quite a few things uh, coming down the pipeline, so... When, uh, can we pause for one second? I mean, I think everybody has probably seen Darren oh God, in our yeah. chats or heard him, heard us answer his questions and stuff, but just for anybody who doesn't know who yeah, Darren let's do is, that first. first off, climb out from under a rock, but second off, um, Darren, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is Darren Buss. Uh, I'm the owner of MGS Paranormal, which is Midwest Ghost, Ghost Seekers from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Uh, we started in March of 2020 when Roland let the cat out of the bag on a, on a podcast. <laughs> so there's no going back from there. Um, but uh, I've, I've been into the paranormal stuff since the shows came out. Um, had some experiences when I was a little kid at about seven. Um, and then 2017, I decided to, why not? Let's get active. Let's get out there. Let's uh, see what we can do. I mean, the shows are the shows, but when you actually do the, the actual stuff, it's a whole different all part. So, um, but then I've been doing it more active, I'd say, mm, late 2019 till now. Yeah. So what, so what was, uh, What's the, what's the origin story look like for look like for you? What was what was your first paranormal experience? Uh, so when I was seven, I was at a friend's house, and my parents and I, um, I was downstairs because everybody else was gone except for my parents and the the other children's parents were there. I went downstairs to play pool by myself, like a seven year old would. Um, they had a dartboard, they had a TV that had to be manually turned on and stuff like that, like kind of like a basement within a basement type deal. Uh, 
back in the day, we played with the Ouija board, which I didn't know what it was back then, of course. And we opened up some doors, I guess. Uh, so I was, like I said, I'll, I'll paint the picture with the TV against the wall. And then about 20 feet back, there's like a gun rack and a coat rack. So kind of what happened was, is that I was playing and that the TV turned on by itself. And I'm like, okay. So didn't get scared at all, but I went and turned it off and uh, decided, well, while I'm here to turn it off, I might as well just unplug it from the wall. So that's what I did. And as I was kept on playing, I felt that the coat rack was getting closer to me. What's that? Sorry. Oh, no, 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 that was a. Uh... I was trying to make my phone stop making noise and it made more noise. Oh. So as I was playing, going around the pool table, I felt this coat rack was coming closer and closer to me, but it just wasn't there. Um, and then all of a sudden the TV came back on by itself after I unplugged it. I'm like, well, this is weird. So then I hurried up to try to finish up the game to leave as I left, I came downstairs. And as I went back with the pool stick, I hit something and here that damn coat rack was standing right next to me. I'm like, okay, I'm done. I ran upstairs and that was it. So that's crazy. Yeah. Two, oh, good. Uh, for two paranormal events to happen like that in a single moment is unheard of. Not unless you get the first one, you know. Do you ever wonder what makes them decide to move this or that particular thing? Like, don't get me wrong, it's a cool experience, but like, why a coat rack? Or or why why did they move this item on that? Or you know what I mean? I wonder that sometimes. Oh, yeah. like, what makes them choose the things they choose? One of like the go to stories people in like my grandparents' house growing up was that it was a uh, like a vacuum attachment mm-hmm. of all things. And it, yeah, this that's a really good like thing to ponder. It's like what why 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 that? Yeah. Yeah. Cause, and I get it if it's like, oh, they moved this trinket that meant something to you or they moved um, something that meant something to them. But it's like a coat rack. What? Why a coat rack? You know? Uh, and, it, and maybe it's just something that they figured out of the ordinary that this is what we're moving. It or it's where it, it was something they knew that you would notice maybe. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's just. I mean, the gun rack had like eight guns in it. And it was, I don't think they could actually move that, but. <laughs> Right. But Jesus Christ, can you imagine the impression it would make if, like, you're on, like, a paranormal investigation one night and there's a, and there's a, it just happened to be a gun rack present. It's like, can you, can you make a noise for us? And you hear, Ch-ch-. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Uh, so kind of, like, the, the next events really happen is when, um, Going to my wife's for her apartment she had. Uh, so that apartment was kind of crazy because back in the olden days, the bedrooms were all like had that fake marble flooring on it. Uh, she had a really heavy wooden bed, it was right direct in the middle of the room. And then the, the closet was one of those ones that to kneel and crawl into. Um, so she never slept in her bedroom. I'm like, why, why don't you sleep in your bed? because there's something in there I don't like and it freaks me out. I'm like, okay. So long story short, her bed would actually shift. <coughs> Sorry. Would, would shift from one side to the other. Hmm. No explanation for it. And that's another like almost kind of common, like I wouldn't say super common thing, but it's almost a, a paranormal cliche. It's the the shaking, the shaking bed, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, kind of find out that a lady hung herself in that apartment. So, you would have thought they would have disclosed that prior. They don't necessarily. I, have I know to. they don't have to. There's but some I, states that I feel it's like required. More than you should. <laughs> yeah. In some states, it's required, and in other states, it's not required to disclose if someone's died in the home. But in the grand scheme of things, even if there isn't somebody who's died in that particular house, somebody has died on that spot of land. Or oh, darn solid chance throughout history. 
there, you can't step anywhere without probably stepping on a dead body or a spot somebody died. Right, right. How's that for morbid? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, a, the whole land's full of death. I mean, if you want to go that far with the barrier mounds and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like the settlers, when they were traveling across the country, when they someone died, they just buried them wherever it was. <laughs> Grandma got dysentery and yeah, let's just I mean, toss her here. What are they going to do? Take her with? I mean, yeah. For three weeks in the hot covered wagon until they get to where they're going? I love my grandma, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's a good movie, by the way. Ew. Anyway. So, Darren is the man of many questions, typically. He is the one uh, hopping in chat, supplying questions, but uh, in the unique position of Which not being just in questions. chat. Yeah, um, so actually, we've got questions in chat already. Um, oh, I haven't even looked in the chat. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Um, so, Nico wants to know, um, so since starting investigating in 2017, um, is the way you've investigated changed at all, or is it still pretty much the same? Um, it's changed. Uh, <laughs> the way of thinking of things have changed. Uh, the equipment has changed definitely. Um, it's just kind of... I think back in 2017, I was more jittery and not knowing what to do if I like I got uh, a phantom smell or heard an EVP and stuff like that. Like, you know, I just didn't know how to react, you know, like uh, a seasoned veteran would, you know. Um, now it's it's like the equipment is so different. You got to get yourself adjusted to the equipment. You now you just sit there and you listen to the rule and wait for something to happen, you know, instead of getting on running like, oh, holy shit, trying to run, you know, like, no, you stay right. put, you gravitate towards it more, you know, um, and just the other night, I, I got my first time ever flashlight coming on by itself four different times. So where was that at? Uh, we were at the Dead by Dawn um, building in um, Manitowoc, oh, Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty neat place. Uh, we were invited by Wendigo Paranormal to do that. There you oh, go. Oh, that's why that all sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. And we have a... Apparently got an invite, but we, like... We don't hop in like it fill in like the spam folder and uh yeah, we were just, just happened to be one of those few times that we like actually went through our email and we're like, Oh shit, we're 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 it late. Was the week of, <laughs> yeah. It was the week of, so uh yeah, maybe next time. Uh so what was that a uh, it's a dead by dead by dawn inn? Uh yeah, breakfast? it's just like a, it's an inn, a breakfast. So many different businesses were in there at the time, like the doctor's office, a dentist's office, a furniture store, um, just so many different. There's a real estate building that's like all connected with it that just basically opened up to us to investigate. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was uh, a place of many things. Uh, Heather Ghost Girl can, can explain a little bit more better than, than I could, but it's a 170-year-old building. So it's the oldest one. The oldest one's on a block, the historical spot. So we're also uh, trying to keep an eye on chat as well. Um, So Kim wants to know um, when it comes to, and I think we get asked the questions a lot about, you know, know, personal protections, uh, that sort of thing. When it comes to holy water, is the water holy or is it just tap water? <laughs> nice, good reversal, Kim. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it, it it depends on how you want how you react to it. It's all about intent. It could be just water if you want it to be, but if you're going to use it, uh, it's about intent. It's just the same thing as if uh, you're going to use a dollar bill from a strip joint. You know, that's hey, this is my number one dollar bill. This is a fancy dollar. I'm going to use this as protection. That's my intent. I thought you meant to use it to get lucky, but you know. <laughs> but for a dollar? I, you know. <laughs> Boy. <Thank you> cheap. <laughs> Thanks. But I mean, it's when it comes down to everything. I mean, I just use a dollar as, as a reference. Um, 
pen, pencil, whatever you want to use. If oh, it's your course, lucky rock. Kelly usually goes with bagel. Mm -hmm. bagel. Yeah. Yeah, right? that's usually my go to. I think this bagel is going to protect me, then it's going to protect me. But, uh, I mean, and, and it's kind of funny. It's like, you know, as I was asking these questions earlier on, uh, it has come up in several different shows that I've been inside a chat with. So it's kind of funny how that just gets brought up. And so, um, Cynthia wants to know what are your uh, what are your thoughts about being locked in a room full of dolls? Fucking burn them, hunt them. <laughs> and what what is that specifically? Is it like is it something in the uncanny valley? Like it rests somewhere in the uncanny valley? Like what? Is it? I'm that absolutely too, on your team with this. Is it that they're too human? Like I don't know because they are. They're but just, they're not totally human. Well, no. And that's what the uncanny valley is. Are you familiar with the uncanny valley, Darren? Uh, not really. So it is one of the most, try not to think about it too much, because it'll scare the piss out of you, kind of like concept. So I think a lot of people, they go right to the uh, um, the movie The Polar Express, uh, when they made the movie adaptation of that, the animation. And it really creeped a lot of people out, because they looked like people, but they didn't, like, it wasn't, some about it wasn't quite right. And that's kind of like a fundamental thing. Like, it came along in a... Uh, Somewhere in our evolution to humans that we are now, we decided it was a good thing for our species to be afraid of something that looked like people but weren't people. Right. And that's fucking horrifying. Automantonphobia Auto is a fear of human-like figures such as mannequins, wax, wax figures, statues, dummies, animatronics, or robots. It's a specific phobia or fear of something that causes significant and excessive stress and anxiety and can negatively affect a person's quality of life. Bingo. I just wondered if it had like a like a real name, the fear of things that look human. Right, right. Well, I mean, it wasn't bad. I mean, at Melbourne, that, mean, that was, a, that was a, a trick that they pulled on me at the last <laughs> second. But I mean, it wasn't it wasn't bad. I mean, as soon as I got adjusted to the room. It was okay, man. I think there's like forty or fifty dolls in there, and I I kind of forgot about them because I was in there for about forty five minutes to like fifty minutes. I could have made an hour, but I got pulled out early. Um, and on the so if like I'm facing the door, my back's to the wall. On the my left hand side, you got the closets and all that stuff. I was actually seeing a, a shadow person person go back and forth along that wall. So that kind of got my eye there. And the crickets. <laughs> the crickets were really loud in that room. Um, but I always felt that something was above my head. And Kim, well, I think Kim and Alice are telling me that there was actually a ball of light above my head because I kept on looking up like, what's up on my top of my head? So it's kind of weird. but. Hey, I did it. Made it through. I didn't kick anything. So. Dolls are just yeah. creepy. Uh, we got to get you out to Wildwood Sanatorium. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there is a huge oh, a room doll room. It's horrible. And it's, it's, it's horrible. Oh, just hell on earth. Uh, oh, thanks. I'll and pass. like they have one that's an automatronic doll. And so it'll, and it's meant to be spooky. And so it's yeah. all spooky looking and you push the button and it starts like kind of wobbling towards you. It's like, we want to play. That was going to piss. No. Which is weird. Like, it's, and it's weird because when they try to make things like that scary, like clowns, dolls, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, when they try to make it scary, for some reason, it almost has the opposite effect on me. I'm a little less afraid of it. But they've got some dolls that are probably easily from like the 30s through 50s. And those those I cannot handle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially the uh, the glass dolls. Yeah. Oh, Where's yeah. The the, uh, forget those things. My uh, grandma, back when she had her big house, had a, just a ton yeah. of porcelain dolls. Why would I need a notebook when I have all of these sticky notes? Because post-it notes are expensive and a notebook is cheap. I'm already using my second sheet. That one you can write we've on got, and erase it. We've Grab got... What? <laughs> Fuck 
but you got all the toys. But what if I like fill it up and I still need? We should. Uh, I didn't have a doll in the house, but I did yeah. send it to the museum that I bought. So it's sitting there. In, and a doll's one of those things. It's also like, God damn, it seems like everybody and their fucking cousin has like a haunted doll mm-hmm. uh, these days. What What are your thoughts on like haunted objects specifically? Um, it, it depends really on what the object is. Um, I could have a haunted skull. I'd be okay with that. Um, a haunted book. Sure. Dolls. No, I don't want no haunted dolls. Yeah. In my house. But um, it, I, I, it doesn't bother me, really. Um, what's that thing that they sell on eBay? What is that thing? I forget what it's called. The Dibbit Box? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. I don't want that. They can keep that. And I'm I'm very skeptical of yeah. really anything haunted you can buy on eBay, but like Dibbit boxes specifically have been a I don't know about a totally cantankerous subject mm-hmm. for me since uh since starting. But yeah, doing like even just a little bit of research into Dibbit boxes, a lot of them lose a lot of weight very very quickly. Hey, I'm not done with that. No, I'm so very sorry. I thought you were done. No, we've had a bunch. I see. I find IoT shots really cool. Um, you know, having little babies stuck in a jar or something like that, and, or you know, something unique and different that you don't ever see every day. Those I find cool. Some of the shops that we've been to, though, are like some of the haunted museums or whatever you want to call them. It's interesting to walk through them because it's like, okay, this or that piece is giving off a vibe, but for the most part, they're just kind of creepy looking dolls or creepy looking. Items, you know, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's become a fad, kind of like you were saying. I I almost bought uh, three years ago. We went to a, one of those antique shops, and I saw a Laurel and Hardy doll up in the corner. I almost bought it. I'm like, I gotta have that because I love Laurel and Hardy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it was like $100 for both of the dolls. I'm like, forget that. I didn't spend 100 bucks on that. No, I, I was just in a antique shop with a bunch of guys from work because that's what a, a small group of heterosexual men do on a you know Friday night. They go to a like antique shop. And they had this really cool old probably 50s robot toy. And I'm like, ooh, I could have that. I could have that right now. And then I saw the price tag. It had four digits, and I have that shit. That's craziness. <laughs> okay, so what those antique shops now? Do you think any of those are haunted? <clears throat> I've So there's one I'm thinking of specifically in Marquette. Mm-hmm. Um, and it used to be a school, and now it's like an antique shop, and it's almost like a one of those like consignment-type antique shops where, you know, there's sections parceled out and each one's got like a vendor. So like some stuff is like people's like handmade stuff, but a lot of it is just like people's personal antiques and there are spots in there that give off kind of funky energy. And it's hard to tell sometimes if that's the building or if it's just kind of like residual energy around the objects. Yeah. Um, I get that. Yeah. I told my wife, but next time you're out, take a K2 with your digital voice cord and just walk around. Yeah, and I think the residual energy attached to the items is is a very good way to explain why certain items give off vibes, but it doesn't necessarily mean the item's haunted, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. Can you read that? No. Oh, okay, so that's a problem. I couldn't read I was... it when it was on the paper either. Okay, so Chris has handwriting that, like, teeters on fancy looking. The problem is it's almost completely legible to anybody but me, so... Yeah, I wrote it at the doctor. I can't even read my own handwriting sometimes. Just give me a stamp. <laughs> all right, so in the list of many, many questions, because people are trying to return the favor of all the questions you've asked uh, oh. over the years. Um, so you've got, holy crap, five years of it. Five year, 2017 was five years ago. Mm, and that's crazy. That's, that's not okay. Um, but you've got five years under the belt. Now, what is kind of 
one thing on investigation that you've had happen to you uh, that you wouldn't want to have happen again? Hmm. I haven't experienced it yet. Hmm. Kelly? Nothing anything, anything nothing I mean, I yeah. would say Malvern, and yet I kind of want to experience it again to see, so, so I can pay better attention this time, you know? Well, but, that, that, that was just a scare, what they're trying to do is scare me when I got out of that doll room, but I didn't run. I just said, yeah, okay, I know who, what this is. <laughs> <clears throat> but, I mean, nothing's really scared me yet. I mean, I was in Gracie's room, which is weird uh, how... You know, she touched my boot, and then I lay down on her on her bed, and then she touched the side of my face. That's about the only thing I really had at Melvern. Uh, nothing's really scared me yet. Unless you want to count the time in the bathroom with Taylor, and I had to touch. That's scary, floor. right there. You can stop the story right there. That's scary. No, enough. no, I definitely think you need to continue. <laughs> So what we were doing is we were doing an experiment. We had the testicle on the top of that, the very far bathroom across. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, you had a what? A Tesla coil. Oh, Tesla that coil. Not what that sounded like. <laughs> I heard testicle. Did I you hear testicle? testicle? I, I'm like, he had yeah, a... Taryn doesn't oh, say that. Yeah, Floyd was that. right. Wow. But, uh, yeah, we had that on the top of the back of the wall, but uh, on the, in the bathroom, or uh, I'm sorry, in the tub, Taylor was in a tub, and we were trying, and we had Emmett in the back filming, and then I was asking questions, because Taylor, you know, he got that in that state of mind, and he was letting the room feed him. And the, the Tesla coil, uh, <laughs> it, it got weird with him, because he started itching up closer and closer and closer to it, but he almost wanted to put his ear on it. I'm like, you can't put your ear on it because it's set your ear on fire. So, and then Cynthia came in and she saw what was going on. And she's like, okay, you got to get out. So then she got in the tub. Same thing. She started itching closer to it, but not as much as he did. And after, I'd say 20, 25 minutes, she could correct me in the chat. But even then, she got weirded out by it. And that whole thing was weird. It took Taylor three months to tell me what happened after because after that he was done so it's something with the tesla coil that screws with people well it's i'm if i had to guess it's the high amount of emf that tesla coils put out so um because yeah, even if it's not something basketball. supernatural, that EMF is going to make you feel paranoid and like you're being watched, and it's going to give you all of those super haunted feelings. So some people even have like, and this is anecdotal. I'm sure there's actual studies done on this part, like even like visual hallucinations, yeah, like, seeing things. And sometimes I think you just have to get into the right frame of mind. Uh, but yeah, something about overexposure to electromagnetic fields really upsets the like human sympathetic nervous system, like our fight or flight responses. Um, yeah, I mean, I use plasma balls all the time, and they got a lot greater range than a Tesla coil does. But, when but if it's a ball, close, isn't it contained? It's contained, it's not... but but it, if you get really close up to it, like <coughs> you cannot have a K two meter be up to it. It has to be ten feet away, or also set that thing off. Hmm. That's how wide that range of EMF is. The Tesla coil, it's smaller. It's a smaller range. But I think it's a higher potency than a plasma ball. That makes me wonder how much that one of Thomas's is putting out because mm -hmm. he was setting up K two meters halfway down the hall. Oh yeah, so that I, thing's putting out. And I wanted to lick it. I know I wanted so to go up bad. and touch it too, so I get it. This desire to go up and just really put your face in it and look close, but that would have been a bad decision. Now Chris has seen the two that I want to buy, but I haven't mm -hmm. quite purchased yet. And they're neat, but I don't know. I don't know. Pardon me. We had fun with it the other mm -hmm. night when we were investigating. You know, almost. So I think there's like something to it when it's like when you're trying to put that energy out there. But you almost have to start discrediting certain like personal experiences mm -hmm. once you know you're bombarding people with EMF. So yeah, kind of an in between. I, I want one, and I want to play with it like a lot. 
I would go well, small yeah. just to start. But I almost wonder if you'd need to like turn it on, let it run for a while, let it put the EMs up, EMF out there for the spirits to gain their energy, and then leave it off and come back. And it know? might be one of those situations where it's fantastic to use in like a like an empty room, not necessarily one where person's investigating, but uh, mm. like just leaving it static somewhere to. And so that's that's what I did with the plasma yeah. ball. I stuck that up in the attic and let it sit for thirty eight minutes with nobody up there. Yeah, it, it changed the complexion of the room, not to mention when I went back to listen to the video, I heard all sorts of different voices and all that stuff, EVPs happening after 26 minutes of time. Yeah, So, and I think that might honestly be the best way that would be to do an investigation mm -hmm. and let it run someplace where it can't affect a human who's in there and see what you get. Sorry, I'm no. thinking out loud. No, you're good. That's what that's what we do. That's a, yep, that's what we um, do. So I guess that's uh, kind of helps segue into a couple of questions. I don't see, I don't think I wrote it down, but we had somebody ask at one point. So uh, you mentioned like basically uh, one form of EM pump or another as far as like equipment use. Do you have like a favorite piece of equipment that like you go out, you investigate, like this is definitely something I want to use? Oh, man. Um, I use my digital voice recorder a lot. Um, that's one I always have to have. Uh, I just started recently doing the flashlight game a little bit because I got the mag lights. But the most of the time, I really want to pull my plasma ball. Just that's my favorite favorite one. Um, but I don't know. The laser grids are, I've, have kind of killed it for me. Like I got the GS1. That sucked. So now I want to sell that. Um, you know, it's. And then the other one is the app. The Spirit Talker app. That's the one we use all the time. Never been gone wrong with it. Yeah, I've played with it once or twice. It's one of those you need to really try to sit down with it on an investigation, but we end up falling back to like Spiritus or Necrophonic or. Well, and I think part of, of it too is we just don't know how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and so, so it's hard to trust thing. it when you don't know how it works, you know? Yeah. I don't but know. It, it, I haven't done it gets off paragraphs, it gives off words, so it's a word bank, but it saves it. That's what I like. It saves everything that it comes out with. And then you give it back to the owner, and then everything translates with, as to with the location. It hasn't steered wrong yet, so. Yeah. So that's equipment. Um, you're a big experiment guy. Um when it comes to like paranormal investigations, what what would you say is probably the most out of the box type thing that you've done on an investigation? Well, I, I, I like to get my playing cards out and, you know, have like the spirit talker or, you know, whatever spirit box uh, and just see if they can see what I am putting on the ground or on the table, so to speak, or like John Black's thing that he likes to do is you'd write a word on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm see if they can see what it is and say. Um, that's what I like to do. There's other things that are in mind, but uh, like uh, well, here's one I do a lot is I have a, a balloon with a light in it. You know, I want to see a spirit can kick it, pop it, throw it, you know. Twist it. Bob it. <laughs> flick it. And also yeah. remember, pop it. Good oh, yeah, Bob it. Yeah, that's a good Oh, point. I know. I'm dating myself as the youngest in the room. You can stop looking at me like that. Uh, I'm a 90s kid and I'm prepped. No, I like that. Like, because, uh, well, like, especially like in a matter of like establishing intelligence well, on investigation, be like, hey, you know, how many fingers am I holding up? That's something a little more precise. Mm hmm. Shay said something that honestly is really smart. She says she does picture flashcards in case they can't read. And yeah. I never thought about that. But think about if we're if we're talking to some um, a woman from the 1800s, mm -hmm. she maybe didn't know how to read. You or know? anybody. I got ESP cards. I yeah, use ESP you know? cards. Um, there, there was a lot of people who were never taught how to read, and yeah. Hmm. Guess I've never thought of that, Shay. But that's. Actually, really smart. We're gonna we're gonna steal that. <clears throat> I will. I'm gonna. I, I well, I found that the ESP cards were fun to do because I did it on a show once, 
I wanted to see if the crowd could get it. Some actually did pretty good. Yeah, there's a that's just something I find that, like fascinating. It's like the the frequency of correctness that people get at ESP cards, and it's just the you know, random shapes like the star, the swiggle, the three swiggles of the line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'd have more trouble connecting with something like that though when, than if you were showing me a picture of something that was real. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't. Know. That's just me. So here, here's the other thing too that we've tried once before. Uh, me and Cynthia tried to do a tarot reading at for our school. We did try to do it for a spirit. <clears throat> that was interesting. And I was watching a, you were watching a documentary, and it was a little while ago, and I don't remember who it was or where it was at, but um, one of the ladies did it like a tarot reading like prior to the investigation, and like basically like that was supposed to be the intention of the investigation for the weekend. So, I mean, not for the weekend, but like for the night, so. Just try and clarify those yeah. answers or help where they'd asked. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Moving right along with the uh, the questions. If you could investigate with one person, and we're going to make it even wider because it's never really specified in the comments, but uh, I'm going to spec- widen it out to alive or dead. Who, who would be your, like, I want to investigate with that person. Bruce Campbell. Dude, that's a great answer. (laughs) (laughs) Groovy. I I might change my answer. What was your answer? Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Don't know who. Uh, So he is a pretty well-known, like, astrophysicist. Okay, that's why. Um, if I showed you a picture of Neil deGrasse Tyson right now, you'd be like, oh, okay, that guy. Um, like the most soothing voice ever. I thought that was the, the, that's Bob safari Ross. Man. No, the safari man. Oh, Bob the Ross would be fun. Voicing for the wildlife shows. Oh, he also has a very, uh, and I wish I had that. I wish I had like a really nice, just soothing voice. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Sure. I mean, I've seen his face before, but. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. No, because I think it'd be fun to like actually get a somewhat open minded to different avenues of things, but like still very like hardcore science mind mm-hmm. on investigations because I don't know. I like I like the conflict. But Bruce Campbell might be a better answer. <laughs> uh, he's one of my favorite guys. I mean, I, I watch a lot of Evil Dead stuff and all his other manic or manic and all the other stuff he's got out there. But I just got her to watch Bubba Hotep recently. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Two hours of my life. I'm never going to get back. <laughs> that was that is a fantastic feature film. First uh, it's just the mind, the the charisma that guy's got. Uh, I think the it'd be chin. hilarious. The chin, yeah. Uh, but Bob, Bob Ross would be awesome. Bob I Ross love this guy. The, the spirit mess with his hair. <laughs> uh, like, can hey, you imagine like just, just, right away. <laughs> just sitting down in like a dark hallway? Like, hey there, friend. I just want to sit down and let you know that I want to have a nice conversation with you. We're just going to have a or nice Mr. Day. Rogers. We're going to have a nice day Oh, Mr. Rogers, yeah. Hey, their neighbor. Come sit down by this tree. It's this pretty little tree right here. Or <laughs> used to sit down by this nice little tree. And that's his pretty little tree. He's okay. a shadow person. We don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents. <laughs> <laughs> we have derailed. We have totally derailed. <laughs> Kelly, who, who, like, if you had one like guest spot, bring him on investigation. My answer is probably not going to be a popular one. Lorraine Warren. Uh, how would that not be a popular answer? Because I be find out one of two things. Either she is the absolute real deal or she's full of shit. Would she conflict with you? I'm not sure which. Oh, yeah, there would definitely she, be conflict. Yeah. And that's that's the thing. Um, yeah, but I just, I would, 
I wanted to, I want to be a fly on the wall and watch her do her thing. <laughs> that are all, shut up, bitch. That's in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> So we've gone from uh, who would you want to investigate with? So in this hypothetical world, they've invented a chamber. And this chamber can make one apparition appear. You can actually like have a conversation uh, with this apparition. Who are you choosing to have manifest? And what, what, would, what would you talk about? Vincent Price. Shit. Just to freaking listen to him. The guy's good with these answers. He's asked him a million times. He has to have thought about the answers, <laughs> right? I think that would be awesome to have a conversation with Vincent Price and see what his mind is of the other side. Is he haunting the other side as much as what he does in the movies? You know? who And who is he exactly haunting right now? Yeah. I don't know. My my brain goes to go like one of three ways with that. I get like super introspective and be like, I want to talk to like Jesus. Be like, hey, no. they uh, they built this whole religion. Around. Is it is it is it a thing? Like I want to, like I spoil the answers. Uh, there's like a, a like a. Sentimental part of me, and it's like, you know, if you get to like talk to my grandma or Coyote again, or or maybe we just have Bob Ross come back and he'll uh, he'll sue us for in the afternoon. Chris, mm-hmm. talk about happy trees. <laughs> or are you just gonna have a Bob Ross and Vincent Price combo and let this let them talk? Jesus Christ, could you imagine how that would turn? Like, how would that turn out? I don't know who would be louder to the two. <laughs> We're just going to paint a pretty little haunted castle. <laughs> We're going to paint a nice little house on Haunted Hill over here. That's all right, but okay. I'm not so happy little tree. Let's get crazy. What the heck? It's a happy tree. Don't mind the body swinging from it. <laughs> wow. Well, we're getting close to killing this hour, um, and we still have more questions. All right, we got all time in the world. So with, uh, you know, with everything that, you know, paranormal-wise you've experienced in your life and deciding to start doing this is, I think, one thing. I think a lot of people on a whim are just like, oh, let's go on a ghost hunt this weekend. And, you know, they talk about it for a few years after that, but they like that's kind of where it falls off. Mm-hmm. For, I think, a lot of people, I think it takes a... An interesting type of person to actually stick with this for any sort of like real duration of time. And interesting is that the nice word for us? Mm-hmm. Okay, right, right. Make a podcast out of it. Make a podcast out of it. Don't. Yeah, we're not um, going to do yeah, the math. We're not even going to do the math on how much math. money goes yeah, into it. This is behavior of insane people by a lot of people's standards. Um, so, like, why do you do it? What do you have a goal in mind? Like. What's is there an end game for you, or is it very much just kind of a what? What? Why do you do it? Uh, I love doing it. It's I find it fascinating. I find it, uh, you know, years ago, I mean, little guy is scared of freaking ET of all things. Uh, likes to investigate haunted locations and see what he can get out of them. Basically, see if we can get answers that. People were waiting for that we can, we can get. Um, the equipment is fun. The people are fun if you have the right group with you. Um, and there is no end game for me. It's solely because I just love to do it. And she is catching flies out of the sky. That's exactly what she's doing. It was a little gnat. It was driving me crazy. I'm fermenting things yeah. upstairs, so fruit flies are bound. I mean, it, 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 I, I really don't have, and I ask my viewers this too, is like, uh, what is the holy grail of the paranormal for you? And I don't have one right now. Um, because if I, if I did, then it's going to be a new one. 
And if I get that, it's just going to keep going. So I really don't have an end game, really. And I, I honestly, I think I'd quit if they're ever like breaking news. We figured out what ghosts are. <laughs> We figured out what ghosts are and how they manifest, and we can do it on command now. And you can talk to dead people all the time. I would quit because it would, quit, it would become it's over, yeah. be boring. And yeah, well, then that's when you have to go outside the box. But what's outside the box? Anything and everything. It's just whatever your my mind is weird. Uh, I think of different things. I mean. Okay, so if you watch like Ghost Asylum, they try to use a box and they put mirrors around that whole box to try to trap a ghost in a box. Now, at that time, that was different. Different, unique, never saw it before. But realistically, can you actually catch a spirit in a box and where would you put it? It's not like an animal. And what's to make anybody think that it can't walk through a mirror? Right. Other people I mean, are there, tell there's you, any sort of properties to a mirror that would... Other people will tell you a mirror is a portal. Yeah. And that's a place, that's the best place for them to go through. I knew back in the day, it was like, it was, but a lot of, like, the mythos behind the mirrors, the fact that it was a, basically a silver plating on the back of mirrors back in the day. It's not the same technology. Back when mirrors became this symbol of, you know, portals to the other world, they're not, like, the same mirrors that we use nowadays. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got black mirrors, you got regular mirrors. You are scrying water. You are scrying uh, crystal balls down. Uh, I scrying the shit out of some fire. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's there's multiple things. Tea leaves. That's another thing you can scry. Um, I think, or is that just more about pretty much anything that you can stare at and focus yeah. on? Is oh really yeah, flames. Uh, flames is another one. So. Um, I don't know. It's I don't know. Thomas has got something good going on right now, so I'd like to see how that turns out. Right. Mm-hmm. I would really like one of his boxes. Those are cool. Yeah. I actually got him bringing a mirror up to the museum. Ooh. That sounds fun. So, yeah, we, we hear references to the museum a lot. What is, what is this museum? Uh, I mean, I know what the museum is, but... For anybody listening at home that doesn't know about the museum. Uh, so the museum is in the Washer County Historical Museum, and that's held in Watoma, Wisconsin. Um, and I just recently, within the last few months, become the booker of the museum to allow teams to come in and investigate and stuff. Um, it was with uh, We Are Paranormal, and things kind of, you know, fell down the tree, and I got hold of it. So, um, so that what that museum is, it's a house and a jail combination with an upper and lower part of jail. Uh, back in the day, they had um, some well-known people in there that stayed four days, four nights. Uh, he liked to use knives to skin his people. And it was kind of strange. But um, And, you know, we're not... I'm not promoting anything right now, but, you know, Ed Gein used to be there for four days and four nights. And uh, his spirit is there. Augustus' spirit is there. But the thing is, is there's so many other spirits in this building that I don't harp on those two to, you know, single them out. Because there's so many other spirits there that, hey, let's go talk to them as well. So... That's what the museum is. Anytime there's a serial killer involved, it's always just a little bit sketchy. So, like, yeah. is there documentation of him being there? Like, is there a news story or something? Yeah, there's a jail cell that he was in. Uh, they have a lot of his artifacts in there. They have his skis. They have his shotguns. They have uh, his knife that he used to skin his women. Was uh, he incarcerated there? Yep. Okay, I gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Yep, he was held there for four days, four nights before. He actually came to Oshkosh once. The first night that he in the jail, they sent him to Oshkosh and he came back. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. The, the jail cell that he was actually in, there was another inmate that actually hung himself. <clears throat> so, it's it's different. Yeah, and then we got a spirit up upstairs that 
he likes he's a german soldier and he likes to push women down the stairs so a lot of times we don't like the women to go in there by themselves because we don't want to get hurt so that's where i need to go it sounds like exactly yeah, and my my wife has been choked by Augusta in the in the uh, Ed cell already. And when are we going there? Our brains were in two totally different places. <laughs> I mean, oh, uh, we we went and investigated uh, the cemetery. Yeah, Stephanie they... and stairs don't go well together. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, Augusta and I have a. A hate relationship. She hates me like crazy, and I try to get answers out of her because I basically interrogate her. Um, and you know, I, I got weird the first night in there, and Cynthia can vouch for me uh, in the chat room. Uh, that was weird because she was on for an EVP session when I was in the jail cell. I never got weird before on investigation until that day. That was weird. And I was holding this knife. That's what happened. My throat closed up. Hmm. When are we going? So, you can we, come anytime you want. Just let me know. free this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I charge thirty bucks an hour, uh, thirty bucks a, a person for investigating for eight hours. And that's one on one time with you, right, Darren? Oh, so, oh, you're talking about investigation. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's investigation. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we killed an hour already, which is absolutely bonkers. Um, absolutely bonkers. Thank you, everybody in chat, for supplying questions and making. Isn't it funny? Darren feel like question we feel all the time. <clears throat> Honestly, it feels hey, pretty, this this feels seat is not good. hot here. <laughs> but it's kind of fun, you know, because I mean, he's he's amazing at asking questions and helping things keep moving along for stuff like this and giving people things to talk about, you know, and it's nice for him to be able to say, well, here's my thoughts on them, you know, so. Absolutely. And that's what I was to say, you kind of like that unrelenting curiosity, like a million and two questions, which I can, I can really appreciate in person. I mean, I was just asking about the dimensions the other day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do. Uh, you know, long talk about like actual, like, like dimensions of like space, like three points of time, but that's a huge, I started rambling at Kelly the other day and I like, I watched her eyes glaze over. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, I mean, we talked about the fifth dimension, the fourth dimension. Okay. So in the first one through three, what comes out of those dimensions? Like are there different kinds of spirits? You know, we don't ever talk about the first dimension, the second dimension, that type of deal. I think as far as like dimensions in that context, I think it's it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's like a it's basically like the laws of physics thing. The, the first dimension isn't so much a place as it is a you know think of like this. I'm, I'm holding a board right now. If I were to put a dot on that, since yeah. it has no outward space, that is a one dimensional object. For this tablet, is a three dimensional object because I'm able to observe its length, width, height. Uh, fourth dimension is like basically whatever that object is moving through space, and Kelly's eyes are glazing again. Yep, she let <laughs> the ADHD immediately kicked in. So, what about portals? What kind of dimensions are those? So, when it comes to like you know portal, when we talk about dimension in that context, mm -hmm. uh, you know I'm not totally sure. I at least for my personal, I don't know if you call it beliefs, but you have this plane that we exist and it's it's here and it's the tangible it's where we uh you know see the dimensions that you know we just described and then there is this almost kind of like a different universe but it sits parallel to ours and you know maybe kind that's like line, right where the dead go um after they pass on before they um are you know reincarnated and come back and Portal is just kind of like the the fitting between those two, where spirits are able to come and go a little bit easier. Um, but Kelly's brought but up that goes back to the question that I ask all the time when we talk about portals. If portals are a place where it's easier for spirits to come and go, does that make me a portal? Yeah, because I, mean, I can talk to them anywhere. I mean, if you want to be super technical, living humans have fallen out of you, and that I would assume makes you a portal. <laughs> 
you know, trust how long, how long does it stay open? You know, how long does it stay open? How many come out at one time? I mean, is it just one spirit at a time? Is it many spirits at a time? Is it open open for like five minutes and it closes down? I mean, if we get a chance to jump through that portal, so they say. And can it be controlled? Because I can control can how come many in spirits. And come, yeah, can come we go and come back? But you're more of an in-between person as far as like speaking. You're a like the spirits aren't actually falling out of you. It's not. I don't think the spirits are literally falling out of like a portal either. It just happens to be where the connection's being made. Mm-hmm. But if you have like multiple portals at spot? one time, does that create a reaction for good spirits and bad spirits to mixture up and kind of explode a little? Kelly's very focused on her artwork right now. No, I'm thinking it, I, I or, don't know that or there can it, be so much as an overload because everything's part of the ultimate collective and it's all part of the same thing anyways. So can it overload something if it's all part of the same thing? And but you which I get because like if there's it's not like a you know, physical door with like an actual maximum capacity of people able to like walk through it, which um, but it, we, I've also heard of, we've heard of situations like Mason has specifically where, yeah, sometimes they just come and go other times for some reason or another, like they described it as sounding like a cannon was shot. Yeah. So what's, what's Kelly just doesn't buy that. I've I think heard it has things. to do. No, I think it's, it has a lot to do with inexperienced spirits, ones who have forgotten how to come and go or how to control their own energy. It's kind of like. Think about when you're having a conversation with somebody and maybe it's high emotions or something that's kind of building, 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 and then all of a sudden it explodes. And you didn't mean to yell at somebody, but it's you've been biting your tongue forever and all of a sudden it comes out. Or, you know, I mean, I think it's, it is it partially like that, like they've been pushing to try to figure out how to get through that barrier and all of a sudden, poof, they pop through and that makes a louder sound, you know? I don't mm-hmm. know. That's just my thoughts. Or, or here's the other thought, like orbs. Like orbs are so many and a few and far between. But, you know, we got different color orbs. We got white orbs. We got red orbs. We got blue orbs. What if they, the orbs mix together and make a different kind of color? If a red and blue run into each other, do they become purple? Does it, well, does a, does a spirit change? Does a room change differently? Does it become more happy? Does it become more angry? Uh, you know, what kind of spirit does it become then? And I think with, like, the presentation of color uh and i'm guessing maybe it's just a vibrational thing because certain colors aren't just like oh we associate you know green with money and envy and nature etc etc it's actually a it's its own wavelength so what if it's just a you know a red orb is a slower moving wavelength of a spirit whereas something that appears you know blue or indigo is much like a higher frequency so why do we use full spectrums and we change the color when we change it in, our, in the room? Do they attract different colors to that color that we change it to? And I think some of that gets back to like the actual like frequency of light. Um, so we don't know, you know, specifically where they exist. So hitting something with something like a full spectrum camera almost kind of makes sense. It plays, I compare it a lot to like a maybe sonar or something. You've got like a so with a full spectrum camera, that's a low and infrared, the high end ultraviolet. And, uh, I lean more towards infrared, but I think that might just be me. But so with the low end infrared light, it's a slower moving light frequency. If it's being put out into the environment, it might be able to actually like catch those shapes like we get in spirit photography that, you know, is basically bouncing back off of whatever that is. Mm-hmm. because of how the light travels. Right. Or does it have to do with their auras? And that they, could be they a have a little spot of their too. aura, and it's whatever color the aura is. I mean, there's a million and two questions that we'll never have the answers to. Well, I've got to get Rebecca to root because she does aura, aura uh, readings, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of unknown questions. 
that's what we do this for is to try to help figure out some of those answers and yeah. so. anyways we went off on a tangent yeah. well it is 9 1 p.m central time uh which means we gotta wrap up the show darren tell us where we can find you online and where we might find you like in person and physically future. so we can geographically where are you I'm going to stalk you. So I'm located in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. You smell Wisconsin. different when you're awake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that depends on what kind of night it was then. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we're from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Um, I have uh, Marsha, my wife, as part of the team. We have Scott Bowser, which is our historian. And we have uh, Michelle Jacobowski as our medium. Um, and... Basically, you can find us at MGS or Midwest Ghost Seekers on Facebook, MGS, MGS Paranormal on YouTube. Uh, you can find me on the Paranormal Brew and BB3 TV Network on Facebook. And plus, you can catch me on Messenger if you want to message me. Um, but that's pretty much where I'm at. Awesome. What? But, Plus, we have a show coming up in February called the Paranormal Bus Stop on Spreaker.com from Paranormal Buzz Radio. Paranormal Buzz Radio. That sounds familiar. I think I've heard of that before. I'll have to remember from there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll Google it or something later. Start in February. Third week in February. <laughs> I hear Shay laughing. Yeah. yeah I had to say that because I saw her pop up, so I better get that done too right away. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it's about that time. It's about that time. It's about sign-off time. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into the Travelers Moon podcast. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Chris Nielsen. I am your other host, Kelly McCarvo. For now. For now. Holy shit! How did we go through a fucking entire episode without that I didn't announcement? Think about it until just now, but. Uh, congratulations. Well, go ahead. Me. Yeah, you. Um. Yeah. So. Um, Somewhere we're thinking in 2024, I will be changing my last name from McCarville to Nielsen. So. And is it going to be held at the Canary House and Farm? Kelly is terrified of the concept of an outdoor wedding. <clears throat> Very much so. Yeah, because I, I love the, my the Cambry. The setting is perfect, though. You know how yes. much I love my Cambry house, but it will... We will have the first 12 foot of blizzard in July or 170 melt your skin off your bones in December if I try to do anything outdoors. So, And is he going to be in his kilt? Awesome. We've had that serious conversation and most likely. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> probably. Um, we may uh, try to find the correct kilt. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Is he doing a drum ceremony too right in the beginning? I haven't thought about that. We really haven't. We haven't actually thought about much. much like. I'm yeah. just on your head. I'm sorry. No, but, <laughs> we got time um, to figure it out. But yeah. Um, so that's happened since. I just got <laughs> slapped in the face. I missed you. <laughs> um, so that happened since the last time we had a show. Um, and I'm pretty sure he did it purely for marketing reasons because it'll be so. Oh, much God. Easier. I'm so sick of writing McCarville on everything. Yeah. Having to find space to put Kelly McCarvel and Chris Nielsen takes up so much room. So this is a business decision. <laughs> and that's about it. Yeah, that was pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's our announcement, I guess, for, yeah. the, for the show. That's it's been a blast, guys. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah, it's been a good time. Um, so. so what do we have coming up? We have. So you can probably um, we're looking at potential online events at the Mason House in kind of central yeah. central February ish. Um, our- we may be squeaking in another investigation somewhere in February March, but it's not locked in yet. So, um, but it's a an- it's a place that we would be doing an investigation later in the year. I do have an event to announce though, if I could do that. Oh yeah, yeah do it. So on um, February 11th at the museum, like I mentioned before, where it is in Watton, Wisconsin, uh, we are having, uh, this is the first time I'm hosting an event. Uh, it's called the uh, Valentine's Investigation. So bring your loved ones or your boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever, or just you yourself. You can come on in for 30 bucks a person. 
Uh, investigating starts at 6, goes till 1 a.m., and we're having Nick Simons and Energy Thompson there as guests. Well, if all goes well, you can ha- say you had an interesting date, and if all goes poorly, you're in a dark, abandoned building. There's plenty of places to hide bodies. So, no, sorry. Absolutely. I guess it's not. It's in a museum. It's not abandoned, but <laughs> no. <laughs> I tell people that all the time. Don't mess with me. I know a lot of dark, abandoned buildings that nobody goes into. Exactly. Uh, there's uncharted areas in this place. I haven't hit yet. So. Oh. There's one or two. Yeah. Um, actually, prior to anything, Mason House. Um, on the weekend of the 11th. Thanks for reminding us that date exists, Darren. Uh, you'll be able to find us in Alton, Illinois. We'll be at the Dead of Winter uh, Dead of Winter event. And that's at the Mineral Springs Hotel. Which is an amazing location. It's so cool. that We've had some pretty phenomenal experiences at, at Mineral Springs. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's been a cool one. Very cool. Uh, so, yeah, live stream. Uh, intuitive retreat sold out, but keep an eye out because maybe, 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 maybe. Yeah. Um, we uh, scheduled an intuitive retreat to be held down at the Mason House, and it was 48 hours, and it was gone. Um, so we'll be looking for a date location to do another one, maybe summer-ish time frame. Mm-hmm. But um, that's where we teach you guys to use your abilities and investigate. And touch your own woo-woo. And touch your own woo-woo. Uh, the weekend after that, we'll be at Whispers in Des Moines. Um, I'm having my one-year anniversary uh, book signing for Fear and Fascination in Edinburgh Manor. If you haven't yet, hop on the Traveler's Moon website or on Amazon and get your copy. Um. That's the first weekend in March. And then March 11th and 12th is the Cedar Falls Psychic and Paranormal Expo. That is an event that I and Mama Pat Craft host. Um, We bring in 40 plus vendors from all over, honestly. Um, psychics, mediums, healers, rocks, gems, crystals, singing bowls, uh, all that weird you shit. name it, it's there. We have haunted locations, paranormal teams, just a lot of everything there. So, so yeah, that's our, so that's Cedar our next Falls, month. Iowa. Yeah. Cedar Falls, Iowa. Cedar Falls, Iowa. Cedar Falls, Iowa. I don't know if there's another Cedar Falls somewhere, just in case. Oh, there's got to be. There's an Iowa City in California. That's crazy. I know, right? Um. Yeah, that's where you can find us geographically. Uh, online, you can find us anywhere on social media at Traveler's Moon. Um, you can find us online at travelersmoonparrot.com, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, technically, we have a Twitter. We just don't use it. Instagram, TikTok, all that jazz. It's been a lovely show. Uh, thank you, Darren, for keeping us company this afternoon. Thanks awesome. for staying awesome. on Christmas show. And all you sexy beaches, have a good night. Mm-hmm.